Well, welcome everyone to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm your host, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, be your own insurance company. Part one in our series on captive insurance companies, the business alternative with author, speaker, and nationally recognized captive insurance expert, Wes Sirk. Well, welcome to the show, Wes. Thank you for having me. Wes, most businesses that are watching our show today are always looking for deductions. And, you know, I don't want to wait till December to do Section 79 or whatever else I'm going to do. But we pay ancillary costs just to have a business online. And one of the biggest ones I've seen is insurance. And it could be anything from E&O to medical insurance to insuring our, our fleet of leased cars. There are a lot of insurance just to protect the company and my own personal financial stability. When I'm talking about a company that looks for ways out, deductions, captive insurance companies for most of our watch, our listeners are going to say, that's new to me. Why don't you give me the basic introduction into captives and tell me what does it do for the business owner? Okay, perfect. A captive insurance company is an insurance company that a business sets up to insure their own risk. So unlike a self-insured where they say, we don't have a lot of claims and we just want to put this money, we're going to keep it on the sidelines. And if they don't have claims, that passes through to them in a K-1. Well, a captive insurance company is a licensed, regulated insurance company. So when they, they would pay a separate entity, and then that entity issues insurance for them. So they're, they're actually creating an insurance company. They have to file with the state. They're right alongside any insurance company you've ever heard of. And the regulators are going to make sure that they qualify as a business, right? And they're going to have to have reinsurance on top of it because nobody can insure their entire risk. Correct. So talk a little bit about, if I'm watching this, I'm saying, well, that's interesting. I do want the deduction for that. And I want to know, is there really a lot of upfront costs to setting up an entity like an insurance company? There is. Significant. It is. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I don't want to scare you off, but um, typically the capital and surplus it takes to start your own insurance company is in the area of two hundred dollars to $250,000. Now, it, it, that is a lot of money. But if you put it on the scale mm -hmm. of most of our clients are paying, they start with a million dollars in premium that they're paying between mm -hmm. health insurance, workers' comp, general liability, and they see every single year that they pay money in insurance premiums, mm -hmm. and the insurance company very rarely ever pays out more than what they paid in in premium. So a quarter of a million dollars is a lot of money, but at the same time, there's probably a quarter of a million dollars in savings right off the bat for the right company. Now, all that premium that I've been paying, we're gonna pay a smaller amount, right, correct? And I only have this one-time startup fee, right? I don't have a 200 to 250,000 annual ongoing fee. Yeah, correct, and that, that's not really a fee, that's capital and surplus. So that's moving it from one pocket mm -hmm. to the other pocket. And, so, that's, and, and you have to file as a separate entity with the state, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so let's say I'm paying a million plus in premium and I don't like it and I hardly have any claims and we have good people working for us and we feel we have a relatively low risk threshold. We don't really have a lot of people that are exposing our company to other things. If we saw that, how do I know how much can I keep and how much am I still gonna be able to have to give to the reinsurers to kind of risk the ultimate catastrophic event? I mean, a good rule of thumb for most people is they should anticipate anywhere between 25 to 35% being paid out for reinsurance. Okay, so, so of the original million they were paying? Yeah, correct. Okay, so, so we're really saying in effect that if we're paying 25 to 30% of that million of premium we were paying just to insure our business, that means it's 60 to 70% I might be able to keep if we have a good year. Yeah, correct. Or if you look at health insurance, perfect example. If you're paying a million dollars a year for health insurance for your employees, the insurance companies expect to pay out any about six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars it's about a sixty percent now you buy stop loss that protects you above a certain amount call it fifty thousand dollars per claim but then you buy an aggregate stop loss and that aggregate stop loss is usually set at hundred and twenty five percent of expected claims so if they expect to pay out mm -hmm. six hundred then at 720 so if you were paying a million dollars before you know once you've paid out 720 in total claims, you're completely off the hook. You know, somebody else is gonna pay those claims mm -hmm. for you. So in many situations, if, if your medical insurance was a million dollars a year, 
you could pay the same million dollars to your insurance company, pay reinsurance, have the money sitting there in reserves, and still be at the same amount or less in a worst case scenario than what you currently pay. So, so I just want to redux. I'm paying the same amount. It's out the door. It's still going a million dollars. I'm just paying it to my company. I have bills to pay out of this company. I'm going to have to pay whatever the claims are, and I have to think and figure out what that's going to be, and the reinsurance cost. And then if there's anything left in, at the end of the year, hopefully there will be, because we managed our risk, then I get to keep that, even though I deducted the entire amount. Is that what I'm hearing? That's correct. Well, I, okay. And this is the fastest growing movement in business risk management. I, I was reading an article that said this, this is where people are going to contain costs. And you have been in this thing. How long have you been doing captive insurance, Wes? Since we did our first one in 2000. And things have changed through a long, over the last 17 years. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So I'm a business. I want to do this, right? You told me I need an upfront kind of 200, maybe 250,000 to start it up. But that cost is the one-time cost. I don't have to go farther than that. All right, now let's say I have- And that goes, all you're doing is taking money from whatever pot you have, and you have to set up your insurance company. And that's so the So your insurance account. company is a C-Corp, mm -hmm. and you have to capitalize that C-Corp with the 200 to $250,000. So and it's it, not that you pay us 250 uh -huh. to set it up, that's money that's sitting there at the side. And that's your money, yeah, but it's, it's reserved. Yours. Yep. It's part of C-Corp, it can't be an S, an LLC. It, it has can be to an be. LLC. It could be. Tax as a C-Corp. So, and why do you think that is? Why do they use that tax entity for this kind of a business? That's just an IRS rule? That's, it's Congress's rule. Oh, it's Congress's rule. Congress makes tax law and IRS enforces it. Okay, so I, let's say I'm buying into this. I like the idea that I'm still going to get my deductions and I'm still going to have money left over if we manage it correctly, if we manage it correctly. And I can, what, what am I doing with this money while I'm waiting for a claim? What, am I investing it? Am I putting it in the market? Am I, what am I buying? You have to invest the money inside the insurance company conservatively. And does that mean mutual funds are out? Well, no, not necessarily. No, a lot of it is mutual funds. Mm -hmm. the, the where you invest the money is directly tied to the kind of risk and your actuarial assumptions. Mm -hmm. Without getting too technical, think of health insurance. Most health insurance claims are paid out within a 13 month period of time. So you have to keep that money pretty safe, secure, liquid, CDs, money markets, things mm -hmm. like that. Now, if you're talking, we have contractors that they're doing builder's risk and they're paying four, five, six million dollars a year into their insurance companies. And, but a, a construction defect claim isn't likely to hit for a 10 year, 12 year, 15 year period of time. Mm. So because you have that long of a period of time, you can get more aggressive even with your reserve mm -hmm. money. You really, can invest in anything and the, the, the language that we use in the investment policy statement is anything that doesn't threaten the financial solvency of the captive. Mm -hmm. um, so you can invest in anything without underlying value. So no derivatives, mm -hmm. futures, mm -hmm. options, things like that, but mutual funds that are tradable, that have mm -hmm. a QCIP number, you can buy and sell those at, at will. EFTs as well? Have I wanted EFTs, to? If, uh, as long as they're- Can I use annuities? Um, you could use annuities, but you can't own a new, you can't get the same tax treatment mm -hmm. for annuities inside of C-Corps that you can mm -hmm. with other entities. So it kind of, if you lose the tax deferred status mm -hmm. of annuities, it doesn't really make sense. Conservative life insurance? Um, no. No, so you can't use that either? You, you can. Well, I say no, because the IRS has said repeatedly going back to 2004 that they don't like life insurance inside of these insurance companies. Insurance companies, don't pay tax on their investment earnings mm -hmm. or on their underwriting profit, they only pay tax on their investment earnings. Mm. So if you think about it, what's one of the greatest vehicles that grows tax deferred, mm -hmm. then you can access your money tax free. It's high cash value life insurance. Mm -hmm. So life insurance companies in the early 2000s started marketing captives as the next great place to take big tax deductions. Can I just repeat to make sure I understood that last statement? So yeah. my, if I have any profit, on my savings of insurance, that spread I don't have to worry about on taxes. It's my investment posture, mutual funds, ETFs. If I have any earnings on that, I have to pay tax on that. Correct. Okay. Yep, exactly. Okay. Well, to me, this is a huge opportunity for people that are in business to really look at this as a viable option. And I like the ability of managing my own risk and keeping the difference. I think that's huge. 
Don't forget to watch our next segment, The Tax Advantages, part two of our series on captive insurance companies, the business alternative. And keep in mind before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Oh my